Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, May 19th, and it is a cool, cloudy spring morning here in southeastern Pennsylvania. We had a lot of rain so far uh, for May. I was expecting it in April, but May, it's been very, very cloudy and rainy. But we shall uh, overcome, as the kids say. So today, uh, going to be doing a little bit of tobacco talk. I'm going to be revisiting a blend that I first uh, gave you impressions of way back in 2016. And I rewatched that video this morning just to see what I thought of it back then. Uh, the tobacco I'm talking about is LJ Peretti's Cuban Mixture. Uh, this is a tin that I got back in 2020. So there is some age on this. Uh, it has been opened off and on. Uh, yeah, so the 2016 video, I will link to that below because I, I spent a lot more time talking about the tobacco than, uh, than I probably will today. I uh, gave much more in-depth impressions of it. But uh, it, was, it was an interesting thing to watch. First off, I spent like the first five minutes talking about Easter, uh, which I try not to do anymore. I try not to have that long of a, of a non-related uh, intro. And the other was that it was uh, right at the peak of my chemotherapy treatments. I was all swollen up from uh, from all the the uh, steroids they were giving me, and I was bald because I'm not now I'm shaving my head, but back then I was bald because of the chemo. And I look exactly like uh, Kingpin from the old Spider-Man cartoons, so that made me laugh. <laughs> so don't be surprised when you see that guy. That is actually me, uh, a, a very different me. Anyway, I talked about it back, uh, I guess that's about eight years ago now, and I've been smoking it off and on since. It's not what I would consider an everyday smoke. It's a very interesting blend. Uh, it's the oldest blend in America, so Peretti started blending this like in the 1890s, so it's a, it's a rather storied blend. Um, it's different from, I think, what the modern palate expects, and we'll, we'll talk more about that. So let me get this tin open here. Uh, and I mentioned this on the Friday live stream. Oh, by the way, this is the tobacco of the month chosen by the folks on the Friday live stream. And uh, I probably should have put something about that in the title card and didn't. Uh, I'll have to remember that next month. So we're doing a monthly tobacco choice. All right, got the lid off. So these tins, uh, they, the tobacco is in a plastic bag inside the tin. And this is from 2020, so this is, you know, three three to four years old. It was November 2020, so three and a half years old. And it's fine. It's like the day I bought it. So these tins are great. They really do a nice job of keeping it tobacco. Unfortunately, they don't do a great job of allowing me to show it to you, so let me just kind of pull a chunk out here. It's very tightly packed in the tin. There we go. Let's see if I can at least give you... It's always a challenge to... So it give you an impression of what the tobacco actually looks like. But it is a ribbon cut. It's uh, somewhat coarse, not long ribbon. Um, smells great. It smells like tobacco. Uh, bit of bit of sweetness from the Peretti topping. And we'll talk more about the Peretti topping. And let me just load this up. And I'll tell you what's in it as far as I know. So Peretti says it's a blend of seven different tobaccos. It probably is the very complex blend. If you look at tobacco reviews, they list them, although they list like eight of them. So I don't know. Uh, but the base components are burly. It's, it's a burly forward blend. Uh, it has, in addition to the burly, it's got Virginia, Maryland, Kentucky, um, Turkish, Orientals, and Latakia. The Latakia is not detectable for me, so I like that. And it does have a topping. Uh, tobacco Reviews claims it's got mint in it. I, I get no mint. And there's, there's some conflicting evidence on that. And when I talked about it back in 2008, I didn't get mint then either. And I also had a lot of trouble picking out some of the components. In the mint, but also uh, no detectable lot of Kia. The Kentucky, uh, it's it's there, but it, it I think it's oh I left out cigar leaf, 
and Cavendish. So the, the Kentucky's there, but the cigar leaf, I think, just occludes it. And the Cavendish, I don't get it. but And I don't see it. It's it's probably a Virginia Cavendish uh, or, or a light early Cavendish. All right, let's get this lit up. <clears throat> Come on, lighter. There we go. It packs and lights beautifully. And one thing I can say about Peretti without any exception is everything that I've ever smoked from them has been perfect in terms of hydration level and really high quality tobacco. And by the way, I've got this in. Uh, this J. Mouton uh, Hawkbill, which is really beautiful. It's got the whale spine uh, shank adornment here and a uh, lovely red brindle stem. I got it right, Jason. I, I have to admit, one thing I said back in 2008 that I think is worth uh, re-saying is that this blend is hard to predict. Sometimes I light it up and it's like this wonderful tobacco that I want to smoke a lot of. Other times I light it up and it's got this very bright edge to it that just doesn't quite agree with my palate. I didn't know why eight years ago. I've smoked a fair amount of it since. I kind of went on a binge for a while. Then I bought this and I, I maybe have a bowl a month or something like that. I still don't know why. Now, if you're a Peretti tobacco fan, you know that there is a Peretti topping that is mysterious and uh, hard to place, not overwhelming, but it's always there. Uh, so if it's something you don't like, you're going to hate pretty much anything the Peretti makes. But it's unique, and it is a little bit leading towards that Lakeland end of things. It's got a little bit of a soapiness to it. But it's not heavy. I mean, I can enjoy it, and I'm not a Lakeland guy at all, as we know from past, uh, when we were doing Tobacco of the Week, we went through a couple of Lakelands that I just had to throw away. <laughs> well, I didn't throw them away, but I put them back into the jar and forgot about them. Yeah, but this is this is really a, it's a very complex blend. It's a and it's an old combination of flavors. You you don't find this in modern tobaccos. The burley and the cigar leaf are what you taste the most. There's, there's sweetness in there. There is a sweet note to the topping. I originally thought that might be molasses, which there may be some molasses in there, but I, I can't tell you what the topping is. I, I don't know. And I'm trying really hard to pull out any any hint of mint and there's nothing. And if any of you guys are scared off by the mint, uh, <clears throat> everybody agrees that other than 
Well, all of the reviews I've seen seem to agree that other than the indication by Peretti that there's mint in it, and some folks have actually said that Peretti has now said there's not mint in it, Peretti's not very open with their recipes. But despite that, it's next to impossible to detect anything in this that, that suggests mint. So if you're afraid of mint in your tobacco, don't worry about that. One thing I, I have changed my opinion on um, is the brightness of this blend. Um, I'm a burly guy. I like the deeper, darker sort of flavors that you get out of burly blends. I'm not a Virginia guy. I don't like the bright, especially like bright citrusy Virginia. I just can't smoke them. This, despite the fact that it being burly dominant and, and have all that cigar leaf and I guess the Kentucky's in there, this has a bright edge to it that I personally don't want a lot of. I'm not going to say it's unpleasant. It's just not my, it's not what I look for in tobacco. So because of that, <clears throat> I would never call this an all-day smoke or an everyday smoke. Um, for me, it's a, it's a nice treat. And I've been smoking a lot of it since it is the tobacco of the month. Fortunately, I have a lot of it. Um, but the fact that I still, I have been smoking this, uh, you know, continually since I got it back in 2020. Despite that, I still have a lot of it left. So I'm not smoking it every day. I'm not smoking it every week. Like I said, maybe a bowl a month or so. A nice change of pace. It's a very nice blend for if you got some time to spend with, with a pipe and, and you just want to explore a blend and see if you can pull things out and all that because it's got a lot of complexity to it. And it's it, it it's probably a much better sipping blend. So if you're somebody that tends to like like I do, tend to like load a pipe and do something, uh, this is not what you want to reach for. But if you're going to read a book or, or listen to music or you know sit out on the on the porch and have a pipe, this this might be a good choice. Yeah, so I, I highly recommend you folks try it, especially if you like the kind of burly cigar leaf blends. I, I think you will find this to be unique and uh, enjoyable. If you're more of a Virginia guy, this might be a little bit outside your real house. But it's good stuff, and heck, something that's been blended continuously since uh, the 1890s. Not many things like that around. In fact, I don't think there's anything like that around. LJ Peretti Cuban Mixture. Uh, yeah. If I were to give it a rating, I would give it a good one. <laughs> See, that's the problem with it. It really wants to just be smoked and enjoyed. I don't want to talk while I'm smoking this, which is probably good for you. It means this will be a short video. And it kind of has to be because I got a lot to do today. Um, nothing terribly exciting, just uh, mundane stuff. Household chores and things like that that I got to catch up on. The wife's in Pittsburgh. Uh, her dad is home from the hospital, home from the, the nursing home now. 
and uh, he's doing well. He, he's doing well. He's uh, getting around better. He he needs help though. He's not he's not independent, and unfortunately, her mom is not able to to provide that. So she's going to be spending a lot more time there, sort of splitting things up with her two sisters, taking turns, kind of. Uh, so you're going you're gonna to have a lot of bachelor cane rod uh, in the in the future, and that's fine. We we've done this before. We're we're good at it. We we seem to we really enjoy being together. We really enjoy uh, our marriage, but we also have found ways to enjoy the separations, and you know we've got our own things that we do and all that. So it's good. And my brother is doing remarkably well. He is, uh, if all goes well, he'll be heading home from the hospital on Monday, so tomorrow. He is currently, and, and just to put this into perspective, just uh, two weeks ago, he was in full septic shock, and they were saying that they were not sure he was going to be able to recover from it. Uh, he had multiple ports, uh, multiple drains, because... If you didn't watch previous videos, he's got uh, a mass on his colon, which led to perforations, and he essentially became septic because of that. So he had multiple drains in his abdomen. He had multiple IV lines. He was, you know, all kinds of problems. And uh, as of yesterday, he was, oh, and by the way, he went three weeks without eating because he couldn't. Uh, so they were giving him, you know, full IV nutrition and everything, TPN, they call it. So, as of yesterday, he is completely IV free. He is. Uh, he was sitting in the cafeteria eating his dinner, and with my sister, and he's planning to head home on Monday. So, fantastic! Still got a long road ahead. He's got to deal with this mass. He's got to get at least another major surgery. He's probably going to have to do some radiation first to shrink it down a bit before they do the surgery. And they don't yet know what it is. They haven't been able to do a biopsy just because everything's been so inflamed and all that. I think they just didn't want to bother it. So uh, eventually they need to find out what this is. I mean, the doctors are saying they still don't know for certain that it's cancer, uh, which I guess is potentially a good thing. Uh, anyway, there's a chance that he might need to go through chemotherapy after this is all over. Uh, once he's stable and uh, he's got his... The mass is removed and everything's reconnected and all that good stuff. So anyway, it's doing fantastic. Thank you for all your prayers and thoughts and kind words for both him and for my, my father-in-law. I, uh, I truly appreciate them. They appreciate them. And uh, they work. They really, really do work. I'm going out. Too much talking, not enough puffing. So notice something interesting last week. I, I made that video on uh, entropy always wins or whatever I called it. I think called it entropy always wins. I enjoyed making that. I, I enjoyed thinking through those things. Um, and I absolutely would do it exactly the same way again. But that video performed terribly. <laughs> and I don't normally pay much attention to this, but when the the views are are so much lower than anything historical. You have to wonder what the heck did I do wrong? But uh, yeah, apparently that one just didn't pique people's interest. But as I've always said, if I get to talk to myself in the basement and one person watches it, that's a win. So it's fine. Maybe you just want to hear me talk about tobacco. I don't know. We'll see how this video does. Anyway, folks, with that, I am going to get on and uh, do some laundry. And I'll let you get off and enjoy your Sunday. I hope you have a fantastic Sunday and you're looking forward to a wonderful week ahead. And until we speak again, I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Bye now. Mm -hmm.